Oh. <laughs> Hi, we're having a little bit of technical situation already. Um, we're back with season two of the journey of an entrepreneur. Leadership is our topic. And uh, for the last couple of weeks, not only I have shared some of the things that leaders have, but we've been able to interview um, Doug Brown from Paradigm Associates, who talked about how to get there, how to get your business to get the better results. What are some of the behaviors? And he talked about attitude and finding good talent and having a defined, um, defined goals and changing some of the behaviors that will give you a better result. So as a leader, what are some of the things that you feel you should have? Some of the things you should be aware to have to make an impact. And I read Jim Collins. Oh boy, sorry, we're having bad connections. Um, built to last, good to great. Uh, I read a little bit of uh, Maxwell, Stig Ziegler, and even watched some videos on um, with. Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and no matter what I was doing, they all had the same message. And the first thing, of course, we know that leaders are able to do is influence, empower others to, to uh, motivate others to come and follow, to be able to, to convince someone that their why and their vision is worthy of them to follow. So what is... What is to have a vision? Well, to have a vision is that a person that has a big conviction of something that needs to be changed or how to service better or how to produce a product that will impact like Johnson & Johnson and organizations that impact in the medical world, that are in the pharma world. A company that can provide a service that can impact and help others. So having a vision has to have a powerful why. Why am I doing this? Why did you start your business? Why are you involved with that particular business? What motivated you? There is a why in that organization that moved you to work. Now, I realize that not everyone works for an organization because they feel passionate. Some people say, I just need a job, right? I need a job and, and I'm going to go work there. But there are a lot of people who are leaders and, and inside of them, they need to have a why. So some of us work in the nonprofit world because it impacts others that are less fortunate and it changes people's lives. So whatever your why is, you have to believe in it. You have to um, be passionate about And when you're passionate about it and you speak about it others that believe the same thing that you are that you're believing in and your why will follow so that's a great leader but also a great leader has the ability to ask questions a leader is able to go anywhere and find out as much information as possible because the more informed they are the better they can create systems in place to deliver their businesses even better I was uh, reading about, uh, um, it's, he's an owner of a supermarket, and every so often he disappears and goes to different supermarkets just to check, are the people delighted when they're shopping at his supermarket? Are the people having a good experience as they're navigating the aisles and picking out what they're going to buy for food? Is it clean? Is it a good experience? And then he actually goes to people's homes and, and asks the question, do you enjoy the product? So that is an a, a entrepreneur, a business owner who wants to make a difference. He or she wants to make sure that their client is happy. So a leader works hard. A leader is inquisitive. A leader is creative. Um, a leader has the ability to ask questions. See, one of the things that you must have as a leader is humbleness. And you must say, that's impossible. What do you mean? Uh, leaders are prideful people. They are people that think of themselves better than others. That is not true. An effective leader realizes that he or she doesn't have all the information. A leader realizes that they have to rely on others' expertise. That's why Jim Collins says, it is not about what you're going to do, but who are you going to have in the right seats. So having the right people on the right seats makes you, the leader, more effective. So very important to know that. Are you able 
to recognize what your abilities are and what they're not? And are you able to trust those in your team to help you get whatever you're doing to the other side? Get to that goal. You know, a leader also um, informs their teams of where they are in their goal. A lot of leaders like to keep their, their team in the dark. It's a bad idea. You must, you must inform your team. Here's where we are. Here's how long we have. Here are the, in, in, the, the pieces that you need in order to get there. So a leader can communicate. A leader can impact. A leader empowers. A leader gives tools to your teams to get them where they need to get. So aside from the vision that it's uh, clear and the core values, most important is having a why you're doing it. It has conviction. And it has the ability to, to listen. Listen well. I had a customer this morning who um, I gave a lot of information as she was making a request. And I said, I can do this, but be ready for this and that. And her reaction was like, why? And I said, well, this is my job. I need to not only do what you're requesting, but also inform you of what's going to happen. That is a complete service. And then she realized that I was trying to help her. Obviously, at the moment, getting those news that, oh, my God, that there's going to be other issues coming up wasn't exciting for her until I explained to her, I'm, I'm watching out for you. I'm making sure that you are well informed on that decision that you're going to make. So a leader is able to not only inform their team, but also impact their customers. You know, it's a great observer. He has great behaviors. Um, they're grateful and thankful. A great leader is very decisive. It has purpose. So one of the things that I noticed about one of the gentlemen who shared their six reasons why is a great leader. What is a great leader? And he talked about not only the envision, right? We talked about that, that clear vision, the gathering of people, um, but also living the life of that who he's hiring. You know, going with them side by side. For that purpose, you know, whether you're in construction or you're in an office, whether you're a doctor or you're a lawyer, you cannot ask of others what you're not willing to do. You cannot demand of others what there are no, there's no uh, experience. See, people follow those that are involved and are engaged. You could be a boss that just dictates and people will do what you have to say, what you're, what you're asking because you're the boss. But do you want loyalty? But do you want commitment? Do you want them to be invested with you in your organization? Then show that you are also there going through the processes that they're going through so that they feel that you are as engaged as you want them to be. It is very important. The other thing he talked about is courage. You know, as a leader, there are times, I remember in 2008 when the market crashed and uh, I hadn't been a business owner that long and definitely I come from a long line of ministers. Um, they're not into doing business, they're about saving people spiritually. So I remember uh, sitting in my desk and saying, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. People are losing their homes, they're losing their jobs, they're you know, exiting the United States back to their countries. Um, and, and I made some mistakes. First, when three of my employees simultaneously decided to resign because they felt that as a small business I was going to disappear too and they wanted to secure their future, and they should have, at that moment I was supposed to motiv motivate them and let them know that I was going to be there no matter what. But I also had fear. And I had to pick myself up. And I let them go. And I, I, I was, okay, no problem. You want to leave? It's, it's fine. And that was a mistake. A mistake because it was at that moment that they needed to see me stable and solid. But no one at that moment knew what was going to happen. It's, just, it's 10 years later and still some of us are going through it. Um, the other thing that I made a mistake was I stopped marketing. And it's a huge mistake when you stop marketing your business at the downtime, 
actually you should increase it. Why? Because there's always someone, unless you have a business that's very niche and, and, and not of a need, insurance is a need, I should have kept marketing at maybe not as high as I was marketing, but not as low as I went. And we suffered the, the consequences of those two bad choices of letting salespeople go and marketing, peop- and, and marketing costs go. So a leader in its time of difficulty picks themselves up and encourages the team. I mean, today is a different story. I've learned from that experience. But I share that with you because there are going to be times as a leader when things look like it's not going to happen. It, it, you're, you're, it's all dark and you're not sure and, and the uncertainty is so huge and you're not going to know what to do. Well, I'm telling you that at that time, pick yourself up. Know that you shall pass through that. Find out what are the pieces that you need to survive that storm so that you can come out through the other side. The Johnson & Johnsons went through the Tylenol you know, scandal, and now they're going through you know, the powder issue. The, the fact is that even successful businesses who have been around hundreds of years making tons of money also go through difficult times. So the journey of an entrepreneur is not always rosy. It's not always fantastic. And there are times that everything is wonderful. Business is going well. Sales are being made. Customer service is sufficient. Technology is awesome. And you're making great money. And then life hits. And at that moment, your team, your followers are looking to you for you to be the strength. And that's what a true leader is able to do. So we're recapping a little bit of what we spoke in the last couple of weeks, and we're going to continue on with leadership and the impact and how to impact others, giving precise examples. My name is Esther Tennis with The Journey of an Entrepreneur. This is being sponsored by Esther Inc. Insurance Agency. If you like it, like. If you think this is important, share it. Or follow us on YouTube. Have a fantastic day.